it's Pete from Cheap Homesteading. I'm in the garage today and I'm finally getting around to installing uh, the fuel tank on my Husqvarna 372 XP clone saw. Um, Holtz Forma makes this saw and it's a G372 XP and it has interchangeable parts. So this will be the same way that you change a fuel tank on a Husqvarna 372. Um, backstory on this thing is I bought this saw and I went out and the first time in the middle of the winter I broke the tank. I sent an email to Holtz Forma and they sent me a fuel tank for it. And the fuel tank that came with it the second time seemed to be a whole lot better quality um, than the one that came on this saw originally. So I was pretty happy that they came through with warranty on it and uh, they sent it out. But I haven't had time to install it, so we're gonna install it now. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is remove this screw, which goes into the tank mount. air cleaner cover off okay so I'm gonna take this top cover off so I have better access just to the fuel line uh, when I disconnect it off the uh, carburetor you probably could squeeze it off but why fight it you know ah I lost it okay air cleaner off You have three screws that hold this on. One here, here, and here. Okay, so there you go, that's off. So I have this off, I took the top off. So now you gotta remove the handle bolts because the handle bolts right to the tank. Okay. So I'm going to remove the bar off because there's one more tank mount that's kind of behind your uh, chain cover. Struggle is real for some reason today. There you go. Okay, so right in here, under all that stuff, there is another tank mount. go now you remove the two bottom handle bolts there we go fish the handle out so right in here there's a little bowl that doesn't go into a grommet or anything it just kind of keeps the tank from ever coming out of there say if the mounts broke uh, it just kind of gives it a little more stability so you got to remove that and the bolt has a little tapered end Okay, so now 
you kind of pull on your tank on an angle like this and it kind of just pops out. I'm going to pull the fuel line off the carburetor. And then we're going to pull that through. We're going to disconnect the shutoff switch, the wires off the switch. You have your throttle cable and you have to disconnect that. So I kind of push up on it and then you kind of get it out of its hook and then it slides off. Oh, oh that's stuck. And she is free of the old tank. The new tank didn't come with an ignition switch, so I'm going to uh, pop this one out. I'm gonna push. My gracious, she's being a pain. There. See there's little tabs you have to compress for that to pop out. We're going to install that in the other handle. Oh my gracious. Okay, she's in. We're going to set it reasonably close and we're going to hook up the uh, throttle cable. So in here there's a little grommet. You slide your cable up through. And then I'm going to shove the fuel line up into the air box and onto the carburetor. I'm gonna hook up the wires for my shutoff switch. That one and that one. Put the tank in on an angle like this. We're gonna pull the excess fuel line up and then it kind of just pops in. So you get it in on an angle and you kind of just slide it up into place. Okay, I'll come back and tighten everything up. Okay, remember that weird shaped screw that goes in here okay that one's tight okay so we're gonna try to install the uh, front mount screw Almost there. Oh no, not quite. Okay, there you go. It started. I think I'm gonna tighten that up good. Okay, I'm gonna go around. Gonna tighten up this mount. There you go. So we got all the mounts installed and tightened up. Now we have to get the throttle cable hooked up. This end of the cable has to go in this notch. So we fold this down. There you go. There's two things you do when you install the tank. As you put the tank up, you make sure you pull your fuel line through. Don't let it get pinched underneath. And same with the throttle cable. There is a little uh, piece of plastic in here that the wire has to go through. So you want to make sure it actually goes through there and it didn't come out of place. And you fish it up through the grommet. Inside here there's a little slot in the plastic that the actual uh, cable has to go into and then that just sits up against it. So there's something really important. Your throttle will stick wide open or close to it if this nylon part of the cable won't fit in here and this part of the nylon cable won't fit into the trigger mechanism. 
Uh, so after you get it installed, make sure that the throttle goes all the way open, but that it returns all the way closed uh, till it hits the actual idle screw. And that's good, we're good to go. Okay, so now we're gonna install the covers. I'm gonna throw the air filter on now. Wow, I really should blow this off, but I don't want to start the compressor up right now. So we're going to install the handle. So now you tighten up all the handle bolts. Remember they come in plastic, so you don't want to uh, strip it, but you want to make sure that they're tight and they're not going to vibrate loose. So there you go, the handle is installed. I'm going to put the bar back on. So make sure when you get your new tank and you put your handle on it that it kind of just fits there without having to pull it in. Uh, because if you're pulling it in, you're putting a ton of pressure on that tank. So if you have to bend the handle or tweak it a little bit so it bolts down nice, um, make sure you take the extra time to do that. It is aftermarket. It's a whole lot cheaper than OEM. So um, always take that into consideration. So that's about enough for today. So you have a good one.